Who were those pesky wall of separation guys? Wedding or car? Which costs more? And why would you not want to move to Indiana? For April 3rd, 2015, from the stylish high-tech underground studios in nearly warm enough to put the top down Cranston, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> For April 3rd, 2015, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Casey Wong with these headlines. Tuesday, a local temperature on the Antarctic Peninsula was reported to have reached 63.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Pending confirmation, that's a record high. Considering this is the fall in that part of the world, that's kind of surprising. Fortunately, global warming is a hoax perpetrated by the science elite and the lamestream liberal media conspiracy. What great news that is. Former U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania and mental case sweater model Rick Santorum has asserted that the concept of keeping church and state separate is part of a communist conspiracy. He said, quote, The words separation of church and state is not in the U.S. Constitution, but it was in the Constitution of the former Soviet Union. That's where it very, very comfortably sat, not in ours, end quote. Mr. Santorum apparently missed those marginal figures in the early history of this country who strongly endorsed just such a wall of separation. Maybe you've heard of them. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. <laughs> Couple of reprobates. CNBC reports that wedding costs are at their highest levels ever! The average cost of a wedding venue is now up to over $14,000. Engagement rings are up to almost six grand on average. Photography averages over 2,500 bucks. DJs are getting an average of 1,100 bucks and bands are pulling almost $3,600. Parties are fun and everything, but why would you want to put yourself in debt over one? Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. Let's rock. For the 28th, Irving Swifty Lazar, swiftly dead. For the 29th, Marina Sirtis. For the 30th, Eric Clapton. For the 31st, Pope Pius IV, he's a dead. For the 1st, Toshiro Mufune, dead. For the 2nd, Ron Palillo, a dead. And for the 3rd, Alec Baldwin, not dead. That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torville, and I'm done! Don't go away, still to come. When is not a person a person? How cool is that? And sure, it's real, but what difference does it make? It can be hard to think rationally when a loved one passes away. This can be especially true in the event of untimely death or when religious or cultural traditions demand quick interment of remains. Blue and Flatley Funeral Homes are here to ensure your needs are served in the most efficient and profitable way possible. At Blue and Flatley Funeral Homes, your money is very important to us, and we want to make sure we do everything you can afford to put your mind at ease. Blue and Flatley, profiting from the misery of others since 1883. <sighs> Mike Pence. The General Assembly of Indiana passed SB 101, also known as the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Indiana Governor Republican Mike Pence signed the bill into law on the 26th. The bill is modeled on a federal law which prohibits state or local governments from placing undue burdens on the ability of a person to exercise their religion. On the face of it, that seems simple, straightforward, and sensible. Even to me. However, the synopsis of the bill does not define its terms. The interesting definitions are saved for page 2, and the most important definition for the bill is the one on page 2, chapter 9, section 7. Quote, As used in this chapter, person includes the following. 
An individual, an organization, a religious society, a church, a body of communicants, or a group organized and operated primarily for religious purposes, a partnership, a limited liability company, a corporation, a company, a firm, a society, a joint stock company, an unincorporated association, or another entity that may sue and be sued and exercises practices that are compelled or limited by a system of religious belief held by an individual or the individuals who have control and substantial ownership of the entity, regardless of whether the entity is organized and operated for profit or non-profit purposes. End quote. That's a pretty broad definition for a person. I had no idea a limited liability company could hold religious beliefs. Hmm. I would imagine that if a person, which... I'll call B, as part of its religion held the belief that, oh, I don't know, homosexuality is a sin, then that person, B, could refrain from selling goods and services to another person, which I'll call H, who happened to be homosexual. Or B could refrain from employing or continuing to employ H, and B could not be compelled by the government to do so, Come to think of it, I I don't think I've ever encountered a limited liability company that was homosexual either. Amusingly enough, the original Federal Religious Freedom Restoration Act was enacted to quash federal interference with Native American ceremonies involving peyote. The federal RFRA was determined by the U.S. Supreme Court to be unconstitutional when applied to the states. As a result of the 1997 case... City of Bern v. Flores. And so, several states have enacted their own RFRAs to help ensure their governments don't unduly burden the religious exercise of their citizens. It's important to note that the federal statute and most of the state statutes don't include estates and trusts under the umbrella of person. Indiana is one of the most recent states to float such a bill, but SB 101 is a bill with a difference. And as any sensible person should have seen coming, with the signing of the bill into law, the entire nation lost its shit. Angie's List scuttled a $40 million plan to expand its headquarters in Indianapolis. CEOs from nine major corporations called on the Republican leadership of the state to enact legislation that unscrews this pooch. The NBA, the WNBA, USA Track and Field, and even, for fuck's sake, NASCAR has condemned the law. Gen Con has threatened to pull out of Indiana, and the CEO of Yelp said, quote, It is unconscionable to imagine that Yelp would create, maintain, or expand a significant business presence in any state that encouraged discrimination by businesses against our employees or consumers at large, end quote. While, as you might have expected, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Bobby Jindal, Rick Santorum, Ted Cruz, and Ben Carson have all defended the law. And Governor Pence? Absolutely floored by the response. He didn't anticipate the hostility that's been directed at our state. Really? Say, Governor, have you read the goddamn bill? I have. Sure, it doesn't say explicitly, if you run a business, you can tell gays or other people that make you feel icky to get stuffed and just say Jesus told you. But it does say that the government can't, quote, substantially burden, end quote, your exercise of religion by saying, for example, you have to treat all human beings fairly. Even if you're say, a corporation or a charity. Kind of a bit crap. Mind you, this governor is not some fresh out of law school noob. He scored his JD in 1986 and spent 12 years in the U.S. House of Representatives. You can't tell me Governor Pence doesn't have the horsepower to read and understand this stupid bill. For crying out loud, it's only five pages, including the signature page. I bet you a nickel that he knew what the bill said and what it permitted, and if he didn't anticipate the blowback, then he has no sense of human decency, no self-awareness, and no social conscience. Seems to me that such a howlingly incompetent move should subject him to impeachment for endangering the economy and reputation of the state, to say nothing of the opening this law gives to religious loons just looking for a chance to put gays in their place under a gossamer veil of piety.
Mmm, piety. Links to the bill and a detailed analysis in the description below. As we do from time to time, let's spend a little while with our resident cranky old man, Kurt Mudgeon, in Curmudgeon's Corner. Being old used to be cool. I remember my grandparents. Dimly. They knew things. Amazing things. They had done things. Surprising things. They smelled funny. Really funny. Now I'm old, and I don't feel like I know anything. I hear kids talking about internets and Facebooks, and I have no idea what they're talking about. Are they making baby talk? Are they insane? Can they really be talking about real things? I worry that they are. What if there really is a Twitter that feeds people? Why is it not feeding me? Am I missing out? Or should I feel lucky? Someday I would like to find out. Is that sensible? Mm -hmm. Indiana's so-called Religious Freedom Restoration Act purports to relieve substantial burdens on the ability of people to exercise their religions. But does the law go too far by including any legal entity that can sue and be sued under the definition of person? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Don't tread on me. My religious freedom is everything. If you are injured or upset because of what my God says about your lifestyle choices, that's not my problem. If you're a sinner, I don't have to do anything to support you or promote your sinful lifestyle. Of course, just because my religion is mine and you may not share my faith, there's nothing wrong with you being subject to my completely unsupported views and my imposing what I think the consequences should be with impunity. And before you say anything, this is nothing at all like the imposition of the beliefs and actions of Islamic extremists on good God-fearing Christians. Because, uh, uh, I said so. Amen! Woo! One of the basic principles of human rights in a cooperative society is that your right to swing your arm ends at the tip of my snout. The Indiana Religious Freedom Restoration Act goes overboard and gives not just individuals, but companies and other legal entities the right to act based on religious principles, which are always subject to the interpretation of the individual. If the law is applied fairly, how can there be any recourse if a Muslim-owned business decides not to serve Christians or Jews? Can an atheist-owned business refuse to serve religious believers? And how do the beliefs of the employees mesh with the beliefs of the owners of the business? Who has primacy? The law is a rat's nest full of cans of worms, all with bad ideas. That's what Pick and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. And now, here's Paul Torville with your exclusive past cast weather. Here's your exclusive past cast weather. The Intermountain region saw periods of rain and snow, and it was cool. Cool. Uh, the desert southwest saw sunny and warm conditions in the east and warm, then cool, in the west. The uh, Pacific Northwest, way up there, saw rainy periods, and it was cool. Because it's the Pacific Northwest. You know, it's cool. I'm Paul Torville. That's your exclusive Passcast Weather. Don't wiggle that mouse. Up next, something obliquely related to sports, open bar mitzvah, and who's the real terrorist? Your childhood. George Lucas. In 1977, George Lucas made your childhood. In 1997, George Lucas took your childhood away. In 1999, George Lucas made you watch as he bent your childhood over a stump. Now, George Lucas wants you to watch him violating your childhood in 3D. Finally, someone is here to stop George Lucas from defiling your childhood memories anymore. But we need your help. 
The original Trilogy Restoration Alliance has been established to raise all the money necessary to distract George Lucas from thinking Star Wars needs to be revised again. Please, give generously. This is our most desperate hour. Help us save your memories. You're our only hope. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with a Sports Half Minute. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. It's a whole half minute of sports. 30 seconds of sports. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. This is your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. The Final Four begins on Sunday. What? Aren't you going to cut me off? Really? Week after week, I write long pieces about some sports thing, and you cut me off in ten seconds. Now, I expect to be cut off, and you want me to go long? Well, you can take this bullshit and blow it on your ass! Duh! <laughs> Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. So, if you're a 13-year-old Jewish boy from a practicing family, the chances are pretty good you'll have a bar mitzvah. Now, it's not necessarily unusual that a 30-something female yoga instructor might be present at such an event. Yoga instructors have families and could be Jewish, I guess. Why not? I think. I don't know any yoga instructors personally. Big surprise. I suppose it's not unusual for a yoga instructor to get breast implants. A female yoga instructor, at least. Now, if that female yoga instructor gets drunk and starts flashing guests at the bar mitzvah, I can see how that could get a little awkward. Now, if after that she took a bunch of the adolescent boys at the party into one of the back bedrooms to show off her new equipment, well, the weird factor jumps into the red. If she then encourages them to touch and lick oh, uh, the wrong ometer pegs, and if she then fillets one of them, well, the input buffer for the wrong ometer just burns out. Well, Lindsay Radowski, 32, from the Scottsdale, Arizona area, allegedly did all of those exciting things. She's now facing 12 felony charges, including playing a 15-year-old's skin flute. She hasn't admitted much other than being blackout drunk. I suspect the trial will be entertaining. We're going to keep an eye on this one. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Terrorism is a very small problem. This message brought to you by author and historian Gwyn Dyer. Dyer gave a talk at Simon Fraser University Woodward in Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. Dyer, a Canadian, remarked, quote, We lost two people in the last year to terrorism, and we lost about 250 a month on the roads. You know, the Americans lost 3,000 people on 9-11, but they also lost 3,000 people on the roads and another 3,000 to gunshot wounds, mostly delivered by their nearest and dearest, end quote. Essentially, the gist of his long, drawn-out lecture was this. Terrorism is a tactic used by people who don't have a lot of money, firepower, or manpower, and it's far less effective if you, the audience, don't spend all of your time brooding over it. And the way the media broods over it doesn't help. Um, duh! Thanks, news media. 
Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, you can submit your story tips online at newsundies.com or on Twitter with the hashtag NUSTIP. News Undies is a weekly show. We'll be back on Friday, April 10th with fresh undies. If you like this video, please like this video. Got a question, comment, or suggestion? Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, circle us on Google+, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, ignore us on MySpace, tell your friends, and buy News Undies Kitsch at newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at News Undies, until next time, I'm Casey Wong. After that, I might be in a Cadbury cream egg-induced coma. From the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in Warwick, Rhode Island. Warwick? No. All right. Let's go with the real thing now. This is a hoax perpetrated by the... Uh, okay. The lamestream... Lamestream? That does not even a word. It's called on the Republican, called on the Republican. I did it again. Corporations called on the called the, 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 the. because I can. Always a great report from Moose. Oh, it would be better if I was on Moose's thing here. And then if that, and then submit your story tips online or, oh dear, <clears throat> fresh undies. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. If you like this video, please like this video. I gotta, I, I gotta get comfortable with this new. I've been saying the old text the old way for so long. It's confusing me. All right, like us on Facebook. Jesus Christ! God damn you! Habam, habam. Done. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a fan of the Cadbury cream egg.